All right, everyone, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, this is pretty hilarious. Our judge executive came up and shook hands with everybody up here just in case we were the secret shakers this morning. In Al's words, he wanted to cover all of his bases. Unfortunately, we are not the secret shakers. Our secret shaker today is the president and CEO of Visit Owensboro, Mark Kelly Tree. <laughs> this is dramatic. Why not give it away? Todd Houston. Todd, come on up, my friend. Todd looks, Todd looks more to hire. So, Todd, we have for you a very special gift today, obviously from our sponsors, Rural Community and Technical College. Uh, there's a nice cooler here, which is great for soft drinks. And there's some more gifts inside, including a gift card for Beef O'Brady's, I believe. So, congratulations. <laughs> hey team, you should tackle him and like celebrate the victory. Great. Pour some ice water on his head. Uh, at this time, we would like to uh, welcome the folks who are tuning in this morning on WOMI at Woodsboro. That's 99.1 FM and 1490 AM. And we're going to celebrate a lot of uh, new members this morning, so let's get to it. Um, this is super fun. We have Drake's. Owned by the Bluegrass Hospitality Group. They're based in Lexington, Kentucky, and they're known as a restaurant that loves beer and a bar that loves food. Drake's features 24 craft and local beers on tap. I see some of you out there with ears like bloodhounds now. Big burgers and the freshest sushi in town. They're your go-to for lunch, dinner, and late night fun. Drake's is a free-willing, fun-loving kind of place so come hang out and let your hair down. It's a place to let yourself go a little. Come play at Drake's. So please welcome John DeLang with Drake's. As an Edward Jones financial advisor, Ed Crawwinkle, Davis County Class of 89, will work to meet your financial <laughs> objectives. That includes planning for retirement, creating a college saving strategy, or perhaps even opening your own business. Uh, together, you can build a diversified portfolio from a broad universe of quality investments, including stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. They can also protect your financial future with their insurance and annuity products. Please welcome financial advisor Ed Crawwinkle with Edward Jones. <laughs> Lung and chest is the private pulmonology practice of Dr. Rejman Dejad. Gosh. It's their mission to provide quality, comprehensive, and compassionate pulmonary and critical care to our community. They treat all lung diseases such as asthma, COPD, chronic cough, lung cancer, pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary fibrosis, pleural effusions, sleep apnea, and more. I just earned a medical degree. <laughs> Seriously. Their staff is highly qualified and dedicated to treating patients as family. So please welcome the folks from Lung and Chest. <laughs> At McAllister's Deli, genuine hospitality meets, means always delivering that little something extra, whether it's an extra smile when you walk in the door or an extra refill as you enjoy your meal. They want a visit to your locally owned McAllister's to feel like visiting a good friend. They often reach out to local schools, churches, nonprofits, and other organizations to get involved however they can. McAllister's values generosity and are proud to employ managers and team members who embrace their culture of giving. Their team is dedicated to doing all they can to support local initiatives in ways both big and small. Uh, please welcome Joan and Blake with McAllister's Deli. <laughs> By the way, I've heard rumors, I haven't been there yet, but I've heard rumors that you all serve baked potatoes that are literally the size of station wagons and you just load them up, is that right? Oh, God, we have a date. There. <laughs> Naturally is a natural parenting and living shop specializing in all stages of childhood. Uh, with a focus on knowledge, Naturally provides parents with resources and products to make the concepts of natural parenting, attachment parenting, and play-led education more manageable and less overwhelming with a kind hand to hold throughout their learning process. Uh, from cloth diapers to baby wearing to organic clothing, Nature Lee strives to provide the best products to the natural-minded community in Owensboro. 
So please welcome Trisha with Nature Link. <laughs> Premier Home Inspection Kentucky. Uh, introducing to the greater Owensboro area, Premier Home Inspection. They are bringing a modern, updated feel to the home inspection process. Using web-based software reporting, the days of the 60-page PDF printout are gone. Their reports include video of issues in the home and hyperlinks to repair information. They offer up to $25,000 in buyer warranties with each inspection. You can reach them at 270-314-9952 or on the web at premierinspectionky.com. So please welcome Wes Donahue with Premier Home Inspection. Red Lobster is a casual seafood dining restaurant serving quality, fresh seafood while maintaining the sustainability of ocean life. They now offer off-site large party catering and specialize in perfecting any event, baby or wedding shower, holiday parties, or even celebrating that special birthday at your house. Whether it's a large party or small gatherings, Red Lobster is the perfect place to host your next event. Please welcome with us this morning, Karen Terry, Whitney Chisholm with Red Lobster. Yanni Marlis with Sonatrol of Evansville is a commercial security professional serving the tri-state area. Sonatrol committed to eliminating security false alarms and increased burglary apprehensions for commercial businesses, large and small. They develop site-specific, tailored community security applications for commercial businesses focusing on verified audio detection, video surveillance monitoring, access control, and fire monitoring protection, 24 7 365 for 100% total volumetric protection. So please welcome the folks with Sauna Troll of Evansville. <laughs> Stites and Harbison, a preeminent Kentucky based full service law firm managing sophisticated transactions, challenging litigation, and complex regulatory matters on a daily basis. The firm represents a broad spectrum of clients, including family-owned businesses, financial institutions, healthcare organizations, manufacturers, private companies, nonprofit organizations, and individuals. Stites and Harbison has 10 offices across five different states. They're in Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, Georgia, and Virginia. And four of those offices are right here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Tracing its origins to 1832, Stites and Harbison is one of the oldest law practices in the entire nation. So please welcome John, Chad, Mike, and Carly with Stites and Harbison PLLC. <laughs> and finally, we have Sunbelt Rentals, and on behalf of Sunbelt uh, Belt Rentals, they're excited to announce that on October 7th, their brand new location is going to officially open. Sunbelt Rentals will be located at 4005 at North Vincent Station Road here in Owensboro. Sunbelt employees are passionate with a get-it-done attitude, known for local hustle and with national muscle. Sunbelt offers a vast variety of equipment rental for construction, industrial, and homeowners every need. At Sunbelt, they promise availability, reliability, and ease. So please welcome Andrew, George, and Misty with Sunbelt Rentals. At this time, we're going to um, recognize all of our elected officials who are with us this morning. And when I call your name, please stand and we'll uh, give them a big round of applause at the end. Thank you. We have uh, Majority Caucus Chair, Kentucky State Rep, Suzanne Miles. Mayor Pro Tem, Larry Maglinger. City Commissioner, Larry Condor. Judge Executive, Al Mattingly. We have County Commissioner, George Waffen. Sheriff Keith Kane. We have County Attorney, Claude Porter. Jailer, Art Maglinger. We have, um, we have uh, from Owensboro Public School Board, we have Dan Griffith, Jeremy Edge, Dr. Jeremy Luckett, and Michael Johnson. From Davis County Public Schools, we have Todd Anderson. Again, if we missed you, our apologies. Give all these folks a round of applause for being with us today at Rooster Rooster. And thank you for your service. And some more special guests this morning. This is really fun. Um, we have some seniors from the OHS football team, and of course their coach Todd Houston, you met earlier, but we want these folks to stand. We're going to give them a big old round of applause today, the Red Devils. <laughs> By the way, they came to see Carlos today, I think he's speaking. Thanks for being here.
Sure. All right. Now we're going to recognize our Chamber Ambassador of the Month, and I'm so excited about this. Uh, please welcome from bb and Jared Darty. Jared, we have for you, my friend, a $50 gift card to the Miller House. Congratulations. So a story about Jared. I was at the Wendell Foster Golf Scramble two weeks ago, I guess, at Ben Hall's. It was awesome. And I saw Jared right before he started playing. He's like, hey, you should come play golf with us. And I was like, Jared, I'm so bad at golf. I mean, it's something about looking at the ball. This, I, just, I can't do it. I'm terrible. Fast forward to hole number six. <laughs> about an hour into the morning, I saw Jared tee off from hole number six, and he hit the ball about 10 feet. I said, you know what? I'll play with you next year because I cannot be that bad. He is no Tiger Woods. He's hit the ball in the woods. Okay. Um, if you're looking around this morning, you know we had a great, great breakfast sponsor with us, and we're so excited to have them here with again. Uh, from Owensboro Community and Technical College, please welcome to the podium, Dr. Scott Williams. This morning, OCTC is very excited to host the Rooster Booster, and we always look forward to this time of the year. Canvas, as always, we appreciate the opportunity, and more importantly, we appreciate all the great work you and your staff do that the Chamber does for Owens. So, our mission here at OCTC is to improve our community's economic development and competitive advantage by providing high-quality, world-class learning experiences. And our successes in carrying out that mission would not be possible without the dedication and hard work of many, many people. Most of y'all are in this room. I'd like to take a moment and recognize some of them. I'll go through the list and we can kind of give them a round of applause when I am done. So I want to first recognize Mr. Jeff Carpenter, the chair of the OCTC board, and the OCTC board of directors and foundation board members, and many of you are sitting up front here. I want to really thank our hardworking and outstanding faculty and staff, their dedication to our service, to our service to our students is second to none. Also, we wouldn't be able to carry out our mission without our secondary partners, so I'd like to recognize the superintendents of Owensboro Public Schools, Nick Brake and Matt Constant, Matt Robbins with Davis County Public Schools, Kyle Estes with the Hancock County Schools, Seth South Southerd with the Ohio County Schools, and Tommy Burroughs with McLean County Schools. Also, we're very fortunate in this community to have four outstanding institutions of higher education. I'd like to recognize my uh, colleagues in crime, so to speak, Father Larry Hostetler with Brecher University, Gene Tice at Kentucky Wesleyan College, and congratulations to KWC on your new president that starts in January, and uh, Dr. Beth Lavis with Western Kentucky University, Owensboro. Without their partnership in advancing higher education, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, and I appreciate all their support. And finally, most important, I want to thank our students and alumni, especially those of you that are here this morning. We're very fortunate to have a number of our students with our Student Government Association here, our Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, some of them are here tonight, and uh, we have some special guests and students in our newest program called Auto Fast Track. They are here this uh, morning with their instructor as well as some of the dealer sponsors that are all of that program. So if y'all would give all those folks a round of applause, I'll tell you what <laughs> So this morning I want to share with you just a sample of some of the positive impacts that OCT is having on this community and those related values. So, since 2000, OCTC has graduated with either a certificate, diploma, or degree more than 5,100 allied health professionals. Those range from nurses to facilities technicians. In that same time frame, we graduated more than 9,200 advanced manufacturing and skills trade graduates, which include more than 3,300 computer, or excuse me, electrical field, those in the electrical field and more than 4,200 graduates in the public service sector, including 1,160 computer and information technologists. 
you're doing the math real quickly, that's more than 18,500 skilled graduates entering our workforce since 2000. In addition, OCTC has graduated more than 4,700 students with an associate in arts, an associate in science, or an associate in fine arts that are prepared to go on to the four-year universities, continue their bachelor's work. In addition, our workforce solutions team has trained more than 50,000 individuals uh, since 2000 and has done over 225,000 workforce assessments. Quite significant numbers. As you can see, we have totaled or touched more than 76,000 individuals in our community since our inception 33 years ago. OCTC, like other higher education institutions, adds value to our region. OCTC and our alumni add more than $173 million in additional income annually to our economy, and that equates to a little over 3% of our region's gross regional product. In addition, 89% of the students that attend OCTC actually come from our region, our four county service area. However, we found through a study that 91% of our graduates stay, live, and work here in our community. Therefore, we're increasing not only our workforce, but our general population. OCTC adds value to our individual citizens. Students receive a 23% return on their investment for every dollar that they spend on their education at OCTC during their working lifetime. And the taxpayers in our region receive a 21% return on investment for their state tax dollars that are invested in OCTC. OCTC is also a, a higher education value with tuition that's only about 40% of the annual tuition of our regional four public four, or regional public four-year institutions. In fact, most of our graduates are debt-free upon graduation, with very few taking out loans. For instance, last year alone, 64% of our graduates were debt-free when they graduated. 36% that did borrow money had an average loan amount of $11,546. For our current students, those that haven't graduated this past year, only 13% took out a student loan. And the average amount of that loan was only a little over $4,000. Due to programs such as the Kentucky Work Ready Scholarship, KCTCS 15 to Finish Scholarship, local OCT scholarships from your generosity that we're able to offer, state aid and federal Pell Grants, most of our students truly graduate debt free. Now, talk about value. Just this week, we learned that OCTC will be adding even more investment and value to our region through a Department of Education Title III Strengthening Institution Programs grant that total more than five, $2 million over five years. This project is designed to provide students in all of our programs with more workplace experience through on and off campus work and learn programs, internships, co-ops, clinicals, and other experiential work experiences. We know firsthand that students' persistence, completion, and depth of learning is much greater when students can directly relate their work experience to their educational experience. The E3 at OCTC project will engage you, our employers, in the learning process, which will in turn enhance our students' preparation for the workforce and thus their existence. Finally, we continue to listen to you, our employers, by developing new programs and aligning our programs with what you need. Due to the success of our current employer-driven work and learn programs like GoFame, GoCareers, TechX, you've heard all about those. Our most recently uh, employer-driven program that we've just started, the Auto Fast Track program, which is a program created with regional auto dealers in which students can go to school two days a week in a project-based work-oriented delivery model and work full-time three or four days a week with regional auto dealers. And again, as I said, we have several of them with us today and those we're happy to have. So as a result of that, we have started some new programs and I just want to quickly go through those for you. We are just getting ready to roll out our warming and manufacturing program. It's going to start in a couple of weeks. A program is designed to get these called Go Females to move women into the industrial maintenance sector. I want to thank you, Dave, for your leadership and Unifirst vision to actually start our first cohort. And I believe we got about 20 in that cohort starting in just a few weeks. In addition, we have worked with our uh, regional con contractors and the Home Builders Association to develop an accelerated certificate program for individuals that want to get in the construction industry. 
That is a 10-month program where students go at night and work during the day in the construction industry, and they can earn up to six certificates in a very short period of time. Our manufacturing sector, we always are trying our best to assist them. So this spring, we'll be rolling out a robotics certificate as they become much more automated. In the fall of 2020, an industrial networking program in which uh, the technology of networking, the factory floor, has become much more essential. In addition, with the advancement of fiber optics in our region, we will be uh, rolling out a fiber optics class in the, in the spring so that we can help uh, train some technicians in those areas. So in closing, I want to personally thank all of you for your continued support. You, our business and civic leaders, are critical to our success, and we are so grateful to be your partner in creating a better life for our community. So a sincere thanks for all that you do for each of us. And remember, it's manufacturing much, so help us celebrate this year. I see Jacqueline's daughter hasn't made it to school yet. <laughs> Should we try to convince everybody she's playing for the OHS football team so she has an excused absence? Okay. Uh, if you all have not yet noticed uh, the go vote buttons, uh, you may need cataract surgery. <laughs> Love these, but huge. So Candace, I may need rotator cuff surgery on this shoulder after wearing this all day. Uh, but to tell you about the awesome Go Vote campaign and more exciting things going on with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, please welcome Candace Brick. Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see you all here today. We want to start off by talking about the ribbon cuttings coming up soon. We have today at 1215, Reflections by Talia Photography, and Monday, October the 21st, 10.30 a.m. Drake's grand opening. Then Thursday, October the 24th, Community <coughs> Ventures, which aids small businesses and people with startups to connect with opportunities uh, for capital and other uh, loans. <clears throat> Our call vote thing, as Chad said, is in full swing. We hope that you had an opportunity to meet with our intern, Gracie Roberts, and with Wonder Boy Media to help be a part of our video that we're gonna roll out in a couple of weeks on Go Vote. If you didn't, then please uh, see Drew afterward if he's right there, hey Drew. Um, but we do have Go Vote, and it's a, it's a big initiative. We, we talk about this a lot, but the overarching idea is that Owensboro has to exert its influence. And by doing that, our voter turnout is key. So we ask that you, as business owners, as leaders in the community, that you all, whether you're in education or in business, encourage your employees, your coworkers, your families to vote. A higher turnout means us to have a bigger voice in Frankfurt um, and in D.C. People look at those statistics and they really matter. We know the, the right reasons to vote, but there's also the hardcore business reasons to vote. There's the two ways to do it, the virtue and then the hardcore business. But we ask you to get out there. We'll be sending you our logos and also letters, sample email, emails to send your employees and um, to encourage them to vote. And the culmination of that will be red, white, and blue which is Tuesday, October 29th. It's sponsored by Big Rivers Electric Corporation, and the FOP will be there with free hot dogs, hamburgers, and drinks. It starts at 4.30. We have, a, we have every state office seeker has been confirmed. The lieutenant governors will be there, as will um, all the other state office seekers. It's going to be fun. It's a family-friendly event, and we encourage everyone to be there. Chamber of Professionals have a busy month. Cooking class is uh, tonight at White Chateau. A CYP networking lunch, October the 9th at AZIP Pizza. A volunteer opportunity is at Burns Middle School for the Guys and Ties program. CYP corporate tour this month is at Swedish Match. And the volunteer opportunity is the cookie baking. They get together at the community center for the seniors and they bake cookies to go in the Meals on Wheels uh, meals. So it's a really cool way to connect and also do something special for the seniors in our community. Not the seniors in high school, guys, the seniors. <laughs> Save the date on the YP Summit, November the 14th and 15th. As you all know, Owensboro was selected among YPs around the state to host this year's YP Summit. And we have uh, Bracken Darrell, who's the CEO of Logitech, based in Silicon Valley. He will be our keynote speaker. He is a freshman <coughs> at Davis County High School and uh, one of our uh, former people that live here that we're very proud of. But he'll be here with us to talk about ways to connect. And um, it's going to be a great program. A lot of other things planned, too. If your business would like to be a part of sponsoring the YP Summit, it's going to be a really good group of several hundred YPs from around this region. So I encourage you to talk to Jessica Kirk. 
who's in the back of the room. And welcome back, Jessica. We're glad to have you back. <laughs> the network is meeting every Wednesday at 8 a.m. at Old Hickory. And um, if you look at your place, we have the Chamber Matters. I'd like to call your uh, attention to the top of the fold on the Lifestyle Health Plan. We are offering uh, an association health plan now. Wellness plan, I don't know what I'm, what I, Jacqueline, what am I supposed to call it? A lifestyle plan. So if you're interested in looking at those rates, they're offering some really good options for employers from two to 500 employees. We've heard great things from several chamber members who have signed up now. And they've also said they would talk to other chamber members if they were interested because they've had such a, a good response for the program. Speaking of the messenger inquiry and collaborations, um, it's almost time the deadline for advertising in the Owensboro magazine is uh, almost up. This magazine is geared towards tourism, visitors, uh, people coming to the community, and it's in all the hotels. It's a really good opportunity for your business to connect with uh, potential customers. The messenger staff is always a great collaborator, and I'd like to ask them all to stand. Thank you guys so much for being here today. If, you, if you'd like to buy an ad, any of these people can help you out. And that'll be in our email, too, if you want to figure out um, a way to connect with them. Speaking of collaborations, um, at your place, we have our relocation guide, our 20, uh, 2021 relocation guide. That's uh, hundreds of hours of work between the Tanner publishing team and the chamber staff. This is for people that are looking at coming to the community as part of our talent recruitment. Physicians, ministers, executives, retirees, millennials, we try to target it towards anyone who may be looking at moving to Owensboro. So um, we'll be rolling that out this week. We wanted you to have the preview. Uh, we actually handed our first one out yesterday to someone who is uh, thinking about moving here from Colorado. So anyhow, that's going to be one of the things that we offer for you. And we want to thank our team members from Tanner West. They have done such an amazing job. And I uh, want to ask one in particular to stand. Uh, you all might not have heard of the pilot training program that's going on in Owensboro now, but at the re regional airport we have a program where you can go to school here and become a pilot. And Cape Air is it's kind of a, a private public partnership between the airport and Cape Air. And you can live right here in Owensboro and fly for them anywhere in the world. Well, we lost one of our best teammates to that program, which is kind of sad. It's one of those double-edged swords. And we'd like to say goodbye to him today. Taylor, Taylor West, would you please stand? He's in the back. That's a, one of the great parts, but the sad parts of this job is you get to work with wonderful, talented young people, and then you see them move through and then move on and up. So, Taylor, we just love you, and we're going to miss you so much, but we know you're going to be flying us one day to Nashville. And John Conti, shout out to you all for being here today with your smiles and always your positive energy. We appreciate you. And our 2019 Business of the Year for 50-plus employees is Southern Star. You know, we, we often overlook the importance of uh, having CEOs and headquarters in this community. But this company has committed to us, and the fact that their headquarters remain here with the high-paying jobs, with the talent that they recruit on a daily basis, and just the integrity and ethics which this company embraces. Uh, we want to recognize them today. Uh, we're going to have a video, and then we're going to ask them to stand. So first, I'm going to move on to the video, and then we'll ask the team to stand. We'll start with the nominees for 50-plus employees for Business of the Year. Don Moore Automotive, Kendrick Screen Company, Jago Homes, Inc., Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Owensboro, PSC, Owensboro Dermatology Associates, PSC, Southern Star Central Gas Pipeline, Inc., Great people committed to providing a great service, well respected in the community and a great corporate partner. If someday you're driving down Highway 56, going out of town, going around the roundabout, on your left you will see a beautiful reflection and it's the reflection of Southern Star on our community. The beautiful glass only shows up what they've done to partner with agencies to send volunteers out and make their company just a wonderful company to be in Owensboro and we appreciate it. It's very unique because uh, basically the natural gas industry is headquartered in Houston, Texas. So it's, uh, it's very rare uh, to have a company uh, not headquartered in Houston, at least from the pipeline side of the business. Southern Star approached us this year and um, just wanted to get involved in STEM education in the community in Owensboro. It's neat that a company 
everybody here in Owensboro sees that need and is willing to, their employees are willing to put that out there. It's great that we have adults in our community that are willing to mentor kids on an academic level and just a personal level as well. Southern Star just has great people that are, you know, committed to not only doing their jobs, but you know, helping Owensboro be a, a greater place to live. Southern Star, congratulations for um, being named Business of the Year by the Owensboro Chamber of Commerce. Um, we're really excited that a company like yours that's willing to invest in students in our community um, has been given this honor, and we think you're well, very well deserving. Congratulations on the Business of the Year Award. I wish you much success in the future and look forward to continuing our business relationship. Thank you, Southern Star, and congratulations. And now we'd like to ask Jimmy Staten and the team from Southern Star to please stand and be recognized. An exciting featured speaker for you all today, and with formal introductions, please welcome up our board chair of the chamber, Dave Roberts. Well, thank you, and uh, good morning, Owensboro. A little pre, uh, this is a great pre-fall uh, break crowd, so uh, some folks stuck around. Who would have thought you had to go south to get uh, cooler weather uh, than we've had here, so. Uh, safe travels to everyone who's hit the road over the next couple days, and uh, uh, safe travels home. Uh, before I introduce our, our speaker this morning, I do want to recognize uh, Dr. Jeremy Luckett. He actually sponsored a table uh, for these young men uh, with the uh, Owensboro High School football team. And so I just want to recognize you in, in, in bringing these folks into the poll, uh, poll, Dr. Luckett. Dr. Luckett is an Owensboro Public School board member, and, and we thank you. And, and Coach Houston, appreciate you bringing the young men out this morning, too, and, and representing. And I know it's a, a unique situation. It's Thursday night lights tonight, right, guys? So it's a, a unique, you know, with fall break uh, coming, I thought it was a great idea to uh, pull the football ahead, and, and so good luck tonight on that. Uh, the other uh, group I'd like to thank is, is, is you, Dr. Uh, Williams and, and, and Jeff, uh, for your leadership, uh, you know, been uh, – in this community, working in the business community for the last 12 years, and I got to tell you, it's it's you guys never cease to amaze me in, in the innovation and program innovation that you bring to the table for us as employers, and and you're such a vital resource in this community. So we want to thank you for your leadership and and your foresight and in, in, in terms of helping existing industry here, and and uh, can't thank you enough for for your leadership on that front. Now to our uh, featured speaker. Uh, Carlos Phillips uh, began serving as president and CEO of the Greenville Chamber on March 29th, it's my wife's birthday by the way, 2016. Uh, Phillips brings a, collective spirit, or a collaborative spirit and uh, fresh approach to his leadership of the largest business organization in the upstate of South Carolina. Under Phillips' leadership, the Greenville Chamber leads, convenes, and mobilizes the business community to drive regional economic growth. Phillips has especially championed such efforts as attracting talent and expanding the workforce, removing barriers to workforce participation, and increasing the Chamber's impact in advocating for upstate businesses. Phillips serves on the Executive Committee for the Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives. He also serves on the boards for the Community Foundation of Greenville, Peace Center, United Way of Greenville County, and Urban League of the Upstate. Carlos is a member of the Rotary Club of Greenville and serves as chair of the United Negro College Fund's Upstate Leadership Council and the Mass Ball. I'd also like to say that Carlos is a native son of Owensboro. He's a 1986 Owensboro High School grad. Uh, he has worked in a number of capacities, along with being a University of Kentucky grad. Uh, he worked for our state chamber for five years and. Um, uh, actually had the opportunity to to meet with Carlos in a number of uh, instances as a as a member of our as a uh, organizational member of our state chamber and, and always had an interest in Western Kentucky and the needs here in, in the greater Owensboro region. Um, he was uh, he told me yesterday that he was at Western Kentucky University and had to speak to a group a group that included his son. 
and he said his son's always got some shenanigans, so I promised him we've got a, uh, a, a lighter crowd here today. He won't face, the, won't face the, the scrutiny, although I know you do have at least one family member here today that um, uh, may get you on that. So uh, please join me in giving uh, a warm Rooster Brewster welcome to Carlos Phillips. Good morning. Good morning. I, um, you cannot imagine how nervous I am right now. You know, I've always, uh, I may be a little nerd, but <clears throat> got four kids and, and they call me just that, uh, a nerd. Um, but since I attended my first rooster, rooster breakfast years ago, um, I've always wanted to come back and speak. Eddie Rooster Booster breakfast. So Candace, thank you for the opportunity. Um, but it comes at a cost. Uh, I couldn't eat breakfast this morning. <laughs> so I'm starving right now. <laughs> um, but uh, with your help, I'll get through this. Um, again, Candace, thank you for providing me with this bucket list opportunity. I gotta say though, um, the last Rooster Brewster Rooster Booster breakfast that I attended, um, th there's a conspicuous absence. I was looking forward to Kirk Kirkpatrick <laughs> and the good news phone. And I don't know where I can't find it. Yet. You don't have the good news phone. Lots of good news, but no phone. All right. Um, I do remember that, though. <clears throat> Red Devil's in the house. Uh, proud Red Devil. I hope my picture is still up in the locker room. Y'all haven't taken it down? <laughs> you know, I stop and I, I think it's been over 30 years uh, since I played um, at senior high. Some of the best memories of my life, best relationships, best times with people, best personal development, um, and uh, enjoy your experience. Why are you going through that? I know you have a game tonight against Muhlenberg County. Is that right? Good luck tonight. Um, but know that uh, the game that you're playing will impact your life for years, for years to come. Thank you all for being here tonight. Please give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> so I'm going to spend some time this morning, um, and you know, like my pastor tells us every Sunday morning, he I won't keep you long. <laughs> Um, but um, <laughs> uh, going to spend some time telling you about uh, a little bit about my life since I left, since I graduated from, from senior high. Tell you a little bit about uh, what's been happening since then, a chamber background, and some of the focus areas uh, that we have um, in uh, in Greenville. Um, share some recommendations with with you, and uh, the recommendations that I was going to share. It sounds like you're already. You're already focusing on them, so that'll be a pretty short portion um, of the speech. Um, and then I'll close with, with something that I like to close with, uh, with every, uh, every presentation that I make. A couple of folks in the audience that I want to recognize. First of all, I want to recognize my dad. Uh, Cecil Phillips is there, still rocking his UK cap there. <laughs> um, my mom and my dad continue to be the chief influencers on my life. Uh, they set such a, a great foundation. Um, they were tough, but I think it was necessary. Um, and sometimes my kids wonder why I'm so tough on them. And uh, they don't have to look very far. Uh, <laughs> uh, my mom and dad were uh, uh, great folks, great parents, and uh, continue to uh, influence my life today. So, Dad, thank you for all that you've done for me. Um, Molly Sacred, Mallory Sacred, I'm sorry, is in our audience. And you all may be saying, why are you singling out Mallory? Well, used to coach youth football with Mallory's dad in Louisville, Kentucky. And so she came up to me, and uh, she thought she recognized me. You know, that tends to happen when you put on about 20, 25 pounds and what have you. People are a bit unsure uh, as to who you are. 
Uh, but she came up and, uh, you know, said good morning. Um, and I think Mallory's an example of some of the young talent that Owensboro has been able to attract and hopefully uh, that you want to retain and what have you. So, Mallory, good to see you. Um, and then I want to recognize some old talent. Where is Randy Clements? Where's Randy? You got to stand up for this one. So, you all know Randy as this very nice, very nice guy over at Trisons. Really, I think he's really nice and what have you. But I'm going to tell you another story. You may feel a little differently um, about him. I met Randy in seventh grade at the old Southern Middle School. And Randy lived about a block or so away from the school. And we, after school, sometimes we'd walk over to Randy's house. Randy and David Howard. I bet you know where this is going. <laughs> so we would walk over to, to Randy's house, and Randy had me convinced that as we were walking through his backyard, that I had to duck down underneath a laser <laughs> that was shooting across his yard. It was installed for security purposes. And I had to duck down, but as I know, this took me three or four times, I realized that I was the only one ducking. <laughs> He's cruel. <laughs> Randy's a good friend of mine. Thank you, brother. <laughs> um, so what's been happening with Carlos um, since he graduated high school? Well, many of you know, I had a rather forgetful football career at the University of Kentucky. Um, I say it was rather forgetful. I thought that I was going to do big and great things at the University of Kentucky, and it didn't just it just didn't quite work out that way. Um, but I had a ball. Eventually graduated in 1990. Um, thought I was going to be the next Bryant Gumble. Anybody remember Bryant Gumble? All right. I was at Western Kentucky University yesterday speaking to some students, and I told them I wanted to be the next Bryant Gumble, and they looked at me like I was like I was crazy. So then I said, Stuart Scott, and that made more sense. That made more sense to them. Um, but I did an internship at a television station while I was at the University of Kentucky, and they told me that I had a face for radio. <laughs> so I go to a radio station, and I'm working at the radio station, and they tell me that I had a voice for print. <laughs> So it became evident pretty soon that the, the career in broadcasting wasn't going to work out. But I had to figure out, had to figure out some other things. Um, I did move back to Owensboro. I taught for a couple of years at uh, Owensboro Community Technical College. And uh, another great experience. Uh, what was really interesting about that is I was teaching students who were a lot older than I was. Um, and uh, they didn't want to listen to me, uh, but I had the grade book. Uh, so, so that helped. Um, taught interpersonal communication and basic public speaking classes for a couple of years. Worked on my master's at Western Kentucky University during that time, sponsored by Owensboro Community Technical College. Um, and uh, finished that work up in 1993. Got married 28 years ago. Moved to Louisville. Latanya and I have been married 28 years. And when I moved to Louisville, I started working for Bell South Mobility, selling cell phones. Now, here's another blast from the past. How many of you all still carry a bag phone? <laughs> well, that's what I sold. And it was cool back then. If you had a bag phone, that was cool stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, but in those early days of the cell phones, and I was disappointed that I was selling phones. I was very disappointed that I was selling phones. I'm like, I have a bachelor's degree. I have a master's degree, and I am peddling, I am peddling phones. What I didn't realize at the time was that that was going to lead to a whole new world of opportunities um, for me. Um, I didn't like selling phones, but I did pretty dang on good. I did pretty good at it to the point that the Bell South said, hey, this guy could be an executive one day. Let's put him in our executive training, executive development program. So I got to do that. That was, that was a great experience. That led to promotions and what have you. So I, Moved from Louisville to Lexington, Lexington to Birmingham, Birmingham to Atlanta. So I got a pretty good view of the South. 
Um, while moving, um, we had a child in every community that we, that we moved to. Um, so we thought, we probably shouldn't move anymore. So that seemed to be the primary cause of the, of the explosive population growth. And, um, but we were living in Atlanta, and we felt like we needed to return, get closer to the village. So I called a good friend of mine, uh, a guy that used to be my mayor, yours too, Dave Atkinson. And uh, Dave and I kept in touch over the years. It's, a, it's an amazing example of, of how, how valuable staying connected folks uh, are. Not because you want something in the future, but just because it's just a good thing to do. So I called Dave and uh, said, hey, Dave, if any opportunities come across your desk, you know, just keep me in mind. And they asked me, say, well, have you ever thought about working in the Chamber of Commerce industry? And I think I said, because the first thing I did was laugh. <laughs> no, I had not thought of it. Um, but one of the reasons I had not thought of it was because I, I never thought of it as a place that uh, had room for me. Um, what I thought I knew about Chambers of Commerce, uh, nothing against old white guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> and I said, well, I really don't have time for that. Uh, but I was going through my rationale with Dave. Um, and as you all know, Dave is um, and continues to be, I, I call him an intellectual disruptor. Uh, former Kentucky Chamber employee sitting there in the front row, an intellectual disruptor. And uh, for all the reasons that I said I didn't want to consider working for the chamber, he would say, well, that's why I think you should consider working in the chamber industry. Um, so I took him on his advice, I took his advice, but only because I thought it could lead me to my next great corporate gig. Started working for the chamber in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, as their vice president of membership uh, uh, development. Uh, and I fell in love with the work. I did bring a perspective um, that was not often shared um, uh, to the chamber. Um, and many, if, if you know me, you know I'm usually not pretty, I'm not bashful. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, but I also learned how to package my thoughts. How to, present, how to present my thoughts in a way that brought people to the table as opposed to pushing them, pushing them away. Um, and I fell in love with the industry. Fell in love with the industry and worked there at GOI for, for five years. And then Dave called and uh, asked me to join his team. And it was one of the ultimate honors uh, for someone that you've admired for so long to call and ask you to, to come help them out. And uh, um, it was probably the best five-year professional stretch that I've had, working for and with uh, Dave uh, Atkinson. I just have uh, nothing but positive things to say about, about that experience. Worked at the State Chamber for five years and went back to GOI for uh, about a year and a half, and that thing, that didn't go so well. Uh, I went back as a number two, and sometimes things just don't work. Um, and while we hate admitting failure, um, I would say that was a failed exercise, but um, it just didn't work out the way I thought it was going to work. But I've often been told, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> so my plan didn't work. But God has something else in store um, for me. And while I was working with uh, uh, the local chamber in my second tour, uh, a couple of chambers around the country called and said, uh, hey, would you like to come? And Greenville was one of them. And I said, no. Don't want to move to Greenville, don't want to move to South Carolina, Confederate flag was flying at this big house, and I said, uh, don't want to expose my family uh, to that. But, as you all may remember, an unfortunate incident happened uh, in Columbia, uh, the shooting incident, um, and that actually led to the Confederate flag actually coming down from the state capitol. Unfortunate incident, but it's something good did come, uh, did come from that. 
And I've been blessed with friends who are a lot smarter than I am who, who told me that uh, uh, do a little research and you'll find out a lot about Greenville, South Carolina, maybe a place you want to go. So I went for my first interview, and when I was leaving the interview, I began praying that this opportunity would work out. And uh, thank goodness, thank goodness it did. Uh, Greenville's a wonderful place. Greenville County, uh, one half million people live in Greenville County. Um, and we're expected to, to add an additional 220,000 people over the next 20 years. Um, put that in perspective, Greenville County is 188 years old. It took us 188 years to get half a million people. And over the next 20, we're going to add 40% more. Um, it's amazing. And I met someone earlier who's from Greenville, South Carolina. Kelly, last name Kelly? Kevin? Yeah. Kevin. Kevin is from Greenville, and so he's going to fact check me on everything that I say uh, today. Am I doing all right so far? All right. And Greenville was a place that uh, it was once known as the textile capital of the South. Uh, if, if it had cotton in it, chances are it was, it was made in Greenville. Um, but as those jobs in that industry went overseas, uh, Greenville began to transform. And so Greenville is now a very global, international community. We've got the Michelin North American headquarters located uh, in Greenville. We've got the uh, BMW manufacturing, their largest site um, in the country is located technically not in Greenville, but in the county north of ours, uh, in, uh, in Spartanburg County. They make the X, the X vehicles. Um, and their primary labor shed is Greenville County. Um, but it's brought a lot of, and, and, and their network of suppliers and what have you. So it's brought a lot of global uh, diversity uh, to the area. Um, and again, explosive, explosive growth. Um, at the Greenwood Chamber, we have five strategic priorities. We advocate, so we've got lobbyists on staff. And, and we work with, a, uh, we contract with, lobbies across the country to try to advance a pro-business legislative um, agenda. Um, I think I got the passion for politics and information from my dad. Uh, if, if I go home after breakfast this morning, the TV will be on some news channel or the weather channel. And uh, um, I've, that, has continued, that has continued with me, uh, but I love working in that political arena. And particularly with the, um, at our chamber, um, South Carolina is a fairly conservative state, similar to Kentucky. Um, I, I am not as conservative as most South Carolinians, um, but we have a space at the Greenville Chamber that we like to own. Uh, we call it the Sane Center. It's the Sane Center. Um, so, and if you look at a football field. There's 40 yards going into the end zone this way. It's, this is my right and your left. So this is the far left. And on the other end of the football field, you've got 40 yards in, 40 yards going in to be your far right. I like that space in the middle, those 20 yards in the middle where, where we, can be, uh, we can be the same center, we can be the objective resource, the good housekeeping seal. By God, if it comes from the chamber, you may not agree with it totally, but you've got confidence that it's, it's good, objective, thoughtful information, and that our positions are pretty sound. Um, and I, I covet that space. Uh, there are attempts to pull either way all the time, and it takes a lot of discipline to stay. In that. Now, the same center doesn't mean I'm not committed to anything. Yeah. Personally, oh, I've got some strong belief. Yeah. I do, but when I've got my work cap on, keep it, keep it between the 40s is what I like to say. Uh, and it seems to be working out pretty well. It seems to be working out pretty well for us. We still have a lot to do. We are growing and we're dealing with social challenges that come with growth. Um, homelessness. Um, a inadequate public transit system. We're dealing with a very low 
uh, inventory of, of affordable and workforce housing. And we tend to differentiate affordable from workforce uh, in, in Greenville. But we have an uh, inventory that we need to build up pretty dang on, pretty dang on quickly. But more than anything, we're dealing with attitude opportunity. Uh, there's a recognition that if we're going to grow effectively, uh, we can't just do it based on Greenville. Our growth has to be more regional in scope. Um, and we've got contiguous counties that we're trying to work with. And that government, I think we ought to get an eraser and erase those county lines. Because they, they create obstacles. They create obstacles to, to getting real good work done for, for communities. So we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to promote regionalism. Um, understanding that you know, we are, there's an old um, African uh, adage that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And, and we, we got to do a better job of trying to go, trying to go together. Um, I know that here in, in Owensboro, you're trying to figure out how to increase your own inventory of affordable, affordable housing. Now, here there's a big plan for downtown uh, for that. That's right. That, by the way, speaking of downtown, downtown Owensboro is beautiful. Give yourselves a huge hand for that. I remember coming down on the riverbanks with my dad and, and, and fishing back when I was a little kid. He didn't like me going fishing with him sometimes because I used to throw rocks in the river. And he told me I was disturbing the fish. Um, what I wanted to say was, it ain't me, it's the bait. <laughs> you're using the wrong bait. Um, but from those days of me fishing on the banks of, of the Ohio River, uh, this place has transformed. You've done a wonderful job. Uh, so congratulations uh, on that. Um, we focus on high impact entrepreneurship, trying to grow that ecosystem in Greenville. So um, you mentioned you've got a uh, Owensboro native that will be coming back from Silicon Valley. Um, Take all the advice and counsel you can from him. Make sure he brings some money with him, too. <laughs> uh, because um, it takes those kind of resources to grow your entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, but you can, certainly, you can certainly do that. Diversity and inclusion. How do you get more people at the table and have a voice in making decisions uh, that, will impact, uh, that will impact the community? Uh, this, is, this can be a tough one. This can be a tough one. Oftentimes it requires extra effort, digging a little deeper, casting your net a little wider, uh, but it can, it can be done. We have a minority business accelerator program where each year 20 businesses go through a very intense curriculum on how to run their businesses more effectively and how to increase their capacity. And over the past uh, six years, over 100 businesses have gone through that. And um, those efforts are starting to pay off for our community. They're hiring people. They're securing uh, great contracts. And, they, and, and, and these folks that have gone through this program, they feel more engaged and more woven into the community. Um, it's pretty wonderful, pretty wonderful to see. I was in Bowling Green yesterday speaking at Western Kentucky University, and they were giddy that they are now the third largest city in the state. Um, it hurt my feelings. It really hurt my feelings. But they, they mentioned how they got there. Um, and it was on an intense focus on retaining talent and attracting new and attracting new talent. Using the university as a primary magnet for that. Uh, you've got great universities and higher education institutions here from Kentucky Western, Russia. Uh, Western and uh, OCTC. I almost forgot you. That been bad. <laughs> uh, but you've got great academic institutions here. Uh, leverage them. Try to keep as many of those students as you can. It, it, it takes intentionality, though. Uh, takes intentionality uh, to do that. 
I was also in Columbus a couple of weeks ago. Took about 80 business leaders there. And uh, same thing. They're, that community is going to add 1 million people over the next 30 years. And guess what's driving that? They're joined at the hip with Ohio State University. Joined at the hip. But it's all about talent. The war right now for communities, it's not about affordable housing. It's not about some of these other things you may be working on. It is about talent. The community that has the most top talent will win. And let me tell you something. I love a good fight. I love, and I love fighting for talent. I tell my staff, I want the talent that everybody else wants. You come to me and say, such and such offer me a job. I'm like, good, my plan is paying off. Now I gotta work to try to keep you, but I want the best talent, and your community should want the best talent too. Focus, focus, focus on retaining the talent that you got and, uh, and, attracting, and attracting more of it. And you may have to start sooner than college. We launched a partnership with our uh, 78,000 student uh, public school system in Greenville County. A paid internship program where we've got high school juniors and seniors now getting um, uh, work-based experience uh, with, with companies there in Greenville. And you say, well, why pay? They ought to do that for free. Internships should be free. Well, we added the pay component to overcome a key barrier to some people not being able to do the unpaid uh, internships. Um, so it's very important, very important that you can focus on that. Um, I'm going to close. I see Candace over here getting a little nervous, so maybe I may have gone, I may have gone a little long. Uh, so I'm going to skip to my close. <laughs> All right, and my close is something that I like to leave with folks uh, when, when I'm speaking. Part of it is due to the climate that we're living in today, uh, but then most of it was just based on how, how I was raised. Um, and adults, you do what you want to with this for the students in the room. Uh, um, maybe you can take a little something uh, from here. There are a lot of things I learned during my time being raised here um, in Owensboro. Uh, but there's one thing that I learned that uh, um, is probably been the most valuable lesson that I've learned uh, throughout, throughout my life. There are two things that you can do in life, two things that you can excel in in life that require zero talent and require zero intelligence. And I want to encourage everybody in the room to try to master these two things, these things that require zero intelligence and zero talent. These two things are be nice and respectful to people and always give maximum effort. I used to get upset, concerned, that I, I've never been called the smartest guy in any room that I've been in. I've never been called the smartest person in any room that I've been in. You can probably understand that with university, college presidents, and what have you like that, corporate CEOs, what have you. But it doesn't matter. I've never been in a room. The only time that I've been the smartest person in the room is when I'm the only person in the room. <laughs> and that used to bug me. It used to bug me like crazy. Because I want to be smart. You all want to be smart? Well, there's hope. There's hope. I decided that I was going to master two other things. There was not going to be a person on this planet that was going to be nicer than me and treat people with more respect than I would. And I don't care what color you are, I don't care where you came from, I don't care how much money you got, I'm going to be nice to you. I'm going to be respectful. And guess where I learned that? Right here. Right here in Owensboro. So I'm going to be nice. But nice isn't enough. Also, when you recognize that you're not the smartest person in the room, then by golly, you better be the hardest working one. And that's my other one. I'm a die on a treadmill guy. I'll tell you what that means. I don't care who you are, I don't care how good a shape you are. And as you can tell, <laughs> I no longer play football. <laughs> okay? But if we got two treadmills standing side by side, 
You're on one of them, and I'm on the other one. Turn that sucker up. We're going to hop on that thing. All right? You may run a marathon, but you're not going to beat me. You're not going to beat me on that treadmill. Now, I have a price to pay once I get off that thing. <laughs> but you're not going to work harder than me. It's been, it's been my model. It's been my model for success. Be nice, be respectful, work the tail off. And it does not, again, it, it does not matter whether you're a valedictorian. I love working with smart, smart people, the people that really smart people, because they think they know everything. They think they don't have to work hard because they're so smart. I'm like, well, today's not your day, buddy. <laughs> because you want to get somebody that, hey, I'm going to work my tail off, but I'm going to be nice while I'm, while I'm beating you behind. No, you don't do questions? Okay, I've been restricted. <laughs> Candace says it's time to wrap it up. So, so that's what I'll do. Again, I cannot tell you how honored I am uh, to have had this opportunity to speak to you uh, today. I hope that my presentation to you was as fulfilling for you as it has been for me. Thank you all so much. Carlos, on Monday, some people in this room joined me for a charity event on treadmills. I did 35 miles, so I want your card next year. I'm putting you to work. <laughs> um, okay, so before we let you go, we're going to put these uh, Go Vote buttons to work this morning. If you have those on your table, please, if you feel like you can uh, put one on without puncturing yourself and bleeding out, um, pop those on because we're going to do a really cool video with our friends from Wonder Boy. Drew's here. Um, as a group, we're going to try to do this in some sort of coordinated fashion. We're going to have you all adorn yourselves with your go vote buttons. We're going to have you stand and we're going to give you countdowns and we're going to do a few takes of go vote. Okay, with like way more excitement than you all are demonstrating right now. And then cheer. Well, I'm trying. I mean, do we have a defibrillator? All right, stand up. Let's do this. Yeah, I feel like you've been on a treadmill for 35 miles. Uh, okay, so, hey Drew. Drew, everybody, Wonder Boy Media, give him a round of applause for filming our Go Vote videos today and the amazing work they do always. Okay, so who's all in the frame? Do we need to have them move in or do you have everybody? Or are we just going to scan? I'm going to scan. I think it's green. Go Vote. Okay, so, okay. You're going to start over here? Okay, so we're going to, uh, we'll do like a countdown of three. We'll do this several times so Drew gets all the takes that he needs, right? Okay, let's do a practice run before we turn the camera on. We've got them in a circuit. They can't do this. Uh, so let's do three, two, one. We'll do ow, ow, and cheer, right? So practice run. Here we go. Three, two, one. Go! Okay, that was pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, so, hey, by the way, we don't want to end up in golf claps when we get over here. Okay, we want to keep it going, right? We don't want to... Like you've seen Jared see off on the of the six. Oh. <laughs> right, over here. Are we ready to do a take? Okay, he's ready. We're gonna start over here, so pressure's on y'all to be amazing. Alright, here we go. Three, two, one, go! go! Thank you so much for being here, Carlos. That was amazing. Have a great month. We'll see you in November at Rooster Booster. <laughs>